So back from the gym, session was really good. I'm gonna make my post-workout meal now, which is more or less the same as been the last nine months. Potatoes, chicken, let's get it. Enough talking. So that's the meal. It looks quite small, but <laughs> I'm gonna put some ketchup on it and That's all the meat for my lunch prep. Literally took me 30 minutes or even 25 minutes. Honestly, there's no reason not to be on plan. Meal prep after the gym, meal prep on morning, Sunday. You're not doing anything, just do it. Get it over with and then during the week, not tempted by pizza, five guys. So we just smashed United. Um, it was a good game, we won 3-1. back from the gym it was a really good session i'm about to make my first workout meal i'm going to take you guys along the whole day i'm going to show you my nutrition and throughout the whole video i'm going to drop some gems about people trying to get into investment banking probably every two minutes every three minutes once i pick up the camera i'm going to give you guys some insights on how you actually land that job at the top investment bank <laughs> tips about how to land a job at an investment bank so watch the whole video the first one i'll tell you is literally set up notifications on linkedin go to linkedin and literally go to job search or job alert and put in keywords analyst banker investment banker investment banking have those keywords set so that way once a new job application is posted by the hiring manager literally you get a notification on linkedin i can apply straight away i can actually make those notifications come every i think one hour three hours end of day the whole point here is you want to apply early. That's literally the key to landing a role. So let's talk about other ways you can break into investment banking. So if you're unlucky like most people and you're not able to secure a job through a summer internship or through a full-time job, what else can you do to increase your probability of landing a job at an investment bank? First thing you can do is further education. And honestly, I get it. It's expensive, it costs money, but you could do stuff like an MSc in finance, MSc in banking, an MBA or a CFA. And the truth also is just because you have more degrees now doesn't necessarily mean that they're gonna pick you because you have those degrees. What those degrees should help you do is show you the most qualified and most competent person during the interview process. So for example, if you have an MSc finance and your niche was maybe private equity, if you go to Goldman Sachs and interview for private equity, this should come across because you have so much knowledge. And also on the flip side, having a master's and MBA or CFA makes people expect more from you. So now the bar is higher compared to someone who has an undergrad in finance or even something not related to banking, the bar is a lot lower. But if you go for an interview, MSc finance, from Imperial, they expect this from you and if you fall short of expectations, they most likely not get the role. So take that into consideration when trying to do a second degree. It's not an automatic, here's the job. And if you wanna do a master's, pick a master's you're very interested in because master's is very hard. And if for example, you already know you wanna work in sales and trading, I wanna be a quant, pick a quantitative master's that will increase your knowledge. If you know you wanna be in private equity, pick an MSc finance with private equity minor or pick MSc asset management. You want the master's to really give you the knowledge, skill, required for the role and for CFA actually for an MBA please if you have no work experience do not do an MBA don't finish undergrad and go to an MBA and think it makes you more employable it really doesn't because when you have an MBA you then think you deserve more money even though you're just an analyst and an MBA itself doesn't give you any skills or knowledge required to perform a banking role an MBA is just a glorified uh, management degree so think about that as well is if for example you've been working six years an accounting firm you then do an MBA to bolster your application then yes it makes sense but if you're an undergrad no experience do not do an MBA and for the CFA 
is similar to the masters the whole point of the cfa is to show that you have that extensive knowledge and they have to show that during the interview because if you have a cfa if you've done the interview they ask you what's a bond or how do you price a bond and you can't say it it even looks worse and like i said before if you have a cfa level one two or three you've passed those exams they're expecting a lot more from you so what people also try to do is try and get an accounting job at like the big four or consultancy job and end up moving to investment banking and yes this does happen but is it common not really but it's not a bad bet because the accounting job will provide you necessary financial knowledge and skills required to perform the banking role very well the consultancy job will allow you to meet clients you get to talk network present all those soft skills and technical skills are being developed in this role so i think it's actually a good bet if you can't get a banking job don't just stay at home try and get an accounting job or a job at a commercial bank or a job at an asset manager just try and get a financial job because at the end of the day you have your whole career to try and pivot into banking. Yes, it does get harder as you go up the ladder, but it's not the end of the world if you can't make it in straight away. Like for me, for example, I did an undergrad, placement year, internship, master's, internship. I started an equity research job and I got the role. So as you can see, it's not a straightforward process. It's not like linear. It's not like just I get a banking job. It's very hard. So try and get an accounting job. I would say try and stay away from like audit, tax. These professions, I know people have pivoted from those professions, but honestly, it's very hard. It's like extremely hard. I won't lie to you. I want to pose a question to you guys. Is it better to start your career at the right firm? So for example, Morgan Stanley in an operations role, or start off as a very small bank, a local Turkish bank, but you're doing M&A. What's better? The whole point here is you can move from back office to front office. People have done it numerous times and yes, it can be done. Probability is low, but it can be done. And most times people will actually end up rather going to a very small bank and starting up doing investment banking there and they always regret it. If I had the option, Morgan Stanley Operations versus, I don't know, very small bank, m and I'd pick Morgan Stanley Operations every single time because I was listening to a podcast by Bilal Hafiz and he made it very clear and I actually agree with him. Starting off your career in the right place matters more than starting off your career in the right role. 100% agree because when you get to Morgan Stanley, you're going to be exposed to so many different jobs I might end up deciding to do something else. And also in MS, the ability to network, meet new people, to me, is completely unmatched than just trying to get IBD job for the sake of it when you're not gonna be doing any real deals. You won't be actually learning anything really. Honestly, you won't be learning shit in that small bank. So what's the point of doing IBD there? It doesn't make any sense.